Well, hello. Hi. I'm Jill. I'm Ray. So let's go cruising. Okay. Dulce de leche cheesecake. <laughs> what a classic. Oh, I want, I want dulce uh, de leche, girl. Golden Girl's dad is cheesecake, man. Oh. Like, uh. like that is good, but I'm craving that dulce de leche. Like, that's that's my go-to. That cheesecake. That one factory. is. They're all like, well, all of them are good. So <laughs> they're so luscious. Like <laughs> that oh, white chocolate raspberry one that I got that one time was. <laughs> Ooh, that Fire, was man. so that was good. So good. That was dang. That oh. was so dang. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that one was really good. Oh, I think I have a picture of it still. Do they have an Oreo one? Yeah, I think so, actually. That sounds really good, too. I love Oreos. Mm, I think they have a Reese's Cup one, too. Oh, that was literally a peanut butter <laughs> chocolate flavor. Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. I love Reese's Puffs. I would have sang it with you, but I was gulping. Sweet. You're not besties until people think you're lesbians. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. Oh, man. At least our boyfriends know all, the truth. That's all that matters. Saying, all of our insults are said with love. Yes. <laughs> We can call each other inappropriate things, but it's funny. <laughs> and I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, of course you don't mind. I don't. I don't mind. I think it's funny. It's I probably me. should be offended, but I'm, I think it's funny. It cracks me up. No, you take it as like, <laughs> why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, You would have that love me or hate me, it's still an obsession attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Audi. Get Audi. Hashtag road rage. Mountain is so pretty. This that, is our view every day. Yeah, that is a bonus of living in Lakewood, Colorado, is that we have mountains on one side and then the city on the other side. Mm -hmm. You literally pick every day. <laughs> Normally, we usually go west. Which is always taught wherever you are, wherever the mountains, wherever you see the mountains, that's west. But what if you're in the middle of the mountains? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> that can't help you there. Then look at the moss. I meant more for like driving around in town. I think moss always grows north, doesn't it? I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. For all you nature people, you could let us know. I don't know. I stay in hotels. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> then my dogs are bougie. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we park here then? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Good view. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome to part two. And believe it or not, I did figure out how to pronounce this chick's name. <laughs> So you're listening to part two of Leonarda Chanchuli. And um, I actually had this information before, but it was so small when I wrote it that I just completely she overlooked didn't have it. Her old lady glasses on. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, no. So at which point um, she was born April 18th. She just had a birthday. Oh. Yeah, of 1894, and. As I was looking through more sources, I just need to point this out. I kept finding a couple different names for her mother. So she's also known as, uh, according to Wikipedia, Serafina Marano. But then according to Stephanie Harlow in her uh, YouTube videos, um, she kept calling her Emilia Dinalfi. So uh, just wanted to point that out. Either which way, her mom's a jerk. <laughs> yeah, and if she's like... If she's involved with, like, criminal lords and mobsters and, like, all of those guys, wouldn't she change her name? So what if she had, what if they were both? She could have, names? but she still wanted to have her, like, fam, her, her family name was reputable because she was a socialite. Yeah, but she got outcasted. She did, but she was trying to get away back in. So having, knowing that name, you know, especially with her daughter. But wouldn't her name be tainted? You'd Coming think, back into it? You'd think, because I wondered the same thing too, but 
when she was trying to freaking basically groom her daughter into it also like oh. um when she became a teenager and saw she was pretty that's where it's she so, she had her so way back in up. yep what the hell so if you're just tuning in um leonarda uh Qian Xiu Li. Uh, she has she's known for being a the first serial killer of Italy, the Italian Sweeney Todd, also a cannibal. She's known for three murders. Each of them are women, and we'll get into that in this part. And she did serve 33 years of detention. So basically, from part one, she had a horrible life. Even before she was even born, her mother had a terrible upbringing. Well, not even upbringing. She just had a terrible end. <laughs> To that upbringing. Yeah, she was, uh, her upbringing was the lavish lifestyle, silver spoon in your mouth, and then it got snatched away, right? Exactly, literally. Some dudes snatched it away, and her family oh, some... for, yep, mm-hmm. that guy. She for, they. The mother effer of a lopcock is what he was. Scrotum flea, I believe. <laughs> Scrotum flea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. That she was forced <laughs> to marry him because now she was pregnant with Leonardo. And I saw in a couple other sources too that she had other children, which I wouldn't just re- I wouldn't say she didn't, but I didn't see anything else really about them. I couldn't really dig too far deep into that one, anyways. Damn, they were just there, poor kids. Yeah. So, either way, that's. And her mom treated her like complete crap. Once Leonardo Leonardo was born, up until like her teenage years, to the like point where Leonardo tried to commit suicide twice, and her mother didn't really even notice. I don't, from what the sources say. Yeah. So after that, her mother realized like, oh, you're getting my looks. You're actually getting really pretty. So here's my chance to get back into high society and mingle and rub elbows with everybody. By marrying you off to one of them. But she didn't tell her this. She's basically like, here, put this on. We're going to go. Let, let's go. Wouldn't tell her where they were going. Just using her like a puppet. Exactly. Like, p- prancing her around like a little poodle, basically. And then, Leonardo, at this point, she did fall in love with an older guy. And he didn't make that much money. But he respected her and he loved her. And yeah, he was like a good husband to yeah, her. Yeah, yep. Rafael and oh, yeah. she told her mother about Rafael and her mom basically freaked out and Just because she was trying out, right? she, well she was already trying to find suitors for her so she took offense she wouldn't be able to be in high society anymore and she was just being selfish completely so she cursed Leonardo um let me see if I could find what that curse was again okay okay you will live a miserable life until the day you die. That is literally the last word she ever spoke to her daughter. And she never spoke to her again after that. Didn't go to the wedding. Acted like a stranger whenever she saw her in public. And Leonarda did believe in curses. I mean, even though she was raised, I think, Catholic, she did believe in curses. So, yeah. Yeah. So the rest of her life, she was obsessed with this because things just kept kind of going bad for her every time they were going good, including having children. She wanted a ton of children just to be loved because she wasn't loved. Raphael loved her, but she needed more than that. You know, mother to child love. Mm -hmm. She didn't have that and she wanted to give it and receive it as well. So uh, having kids would be the way to do it. But she, throughout the years, had about like seven well, attempted to have 17 children. And at this point, from where we're going to pick up off on, she only has four. <laughs> four of them survived. Jeez. Yeah, many of them died. Uh, a couple, I think, were miscarried. Um, but, yeah, many died before they were even, like, three or seven. So much. Yeah. She had just been going through hardship after hardship after hardship after hardship. And from where we finished last time, she had moved, I think, a couple times with Rafael. Um, at that point, she remembers she was uh, working at the bank. And then she ended up getting arrested for fraud when she tried making up a fake oh, account. Oh, yeah, and she screwed over Rafael and yep. his family. Yep, because when she went to jail, Rafael lost his job because he was the one who got her that job. And so now he looks bad. And... um. 
yeah, so everybody else in his family was like, okay, this this is ridiculous. Like, we love you guys, but you got to go. Yeah. So they ended up moving, and when they moved, um, at that point, I can't find in my notes, but where they moved at, um, they were having a wheat harvest, um, and it was a huge community event. Everybody was and out the there. the earthquake swallowed the town. Exactly. Oh, okay. So there was the earthquake on July 23rd, 1930. Yep. So that's where literally she and her family watched the entire town crumble. So now we begin part two. So at this point, she's obviously still got the curse on her mind. So Leonardo was obsessed with breaking this curse now. So after the earthquake, the finally the family had to move, obviously. So she is now left with three boys and one girl. Giuseppe, Biagio, Bernardo, who's a baby, and Norma. So they traveled to Correcio. And that's about seven hours drive time from where they are now. But they were greeted with open arms since they were refugees. And the townspeople, they helped Rafael actually get a good job. They were able to rent another house and it was connected to a little general store. Okay. A vacant one. So Leonardo at this point was riddled with so many emotions to the point where she didn't know what to think. And ironically, she she eventually just felt numb. Oh, no. Yeah. Numb and just disconnected from people in general. So, like, women would come and try to visit her, but she would just sit and stare at the wall. She was just so done life is not working out for this poor no. woman so i don't blame her and neither do these guys i mean the whole community her family was loving life though like they were they were getting along good in school like they were doing good in the community mm -hmm. like their family was fine it was leonarda and Leonarda had suffered enough. She lost 13 children, grew up with abuse. She watched her town literally just crumble before her eyes. But then she started, started to snap out of it. She would get up and she would start to thank everybody for trying to help her like throughout that little time. And the women understood, like they reassured her. They were like, no, we get it. Like you poor thing. So they were trying to help her out as much as they could. And she actually started to feel happy, which was weird for her. <laughs> oh, no. Does she get, like... Well, don't jump too far ahead now. Okay, okay, so, okay. Uh, even though feeling happy was weird, she started making friends. Keep in mind, she had never had friends. Oh, man. So, they would come over, and they would gossip, just talk. She would start to give advice. And her advice apparently was just really good that friends would come over specifically just to get good advice from her and like just knowledge. Wow. And she felt like she finally had something else to offer. So she started to write poetry and she would read it out loud to her friends. And apparently she was really good because they loved it. And they would give it, they would give her standing ovations even. Jeez. Are any she, of those published? I don't know. That's a good question, actually. I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, that's a really good question. But she soaked it up. Now, Raphael was finally making really good money. And she was now happy. So she decided to sell shit. <laughs> she figured, like, well, I mean, I have this vacant little store right here, like, connected to the house. And I feel good. Why not open up a little store? Okay. So... Uh, um, she used her knowledge from the Romanis and the bank and made soap. She started making soap. Oh my God. So she passed it around and sold it to her community. And she started getting orders from all over Italy. Like her soaps were really good, apparently. And this was the first time ever in her life that she was successful or just considered successful. So she revealed also that she could also read palms. So her reputation grew because her predictions actually started coming true. Holy shit. Yeah, she had good intuition, apparently. She had a milky eye like me. <laughs> <laughs> so men would even come, too. It wasn't just women. Like, men would even come. So everybody would come to her. And it was mostly, like, farmers to know, like, okay, what kind of crops should I grow right now? Like, it's been, the weather's been a little rough. 
I don't know what's going on. Like, what do you think I should grow? And yeah. she would tell them and it would, they would start growing. Interesting. So the Romani even came to her also, but mostly just to barter for soaps. So at this point, she had stopped writing poetry because she was focused more on just removing the curse because she's still paranoid to hell. So at this point, as she's like studying, she's got books upon books of spells and just everything she can. She became more of a perfectionist, not only with like reading her texts and spells, but just practicing and perfecting them to a T. Oh, she was getting obsessed and she mostly focused on protection spells and harm spells so this helped her feel like self-assured but she couldn't stop that feeling of control so she would practice her spells at night while everybody was asleep and then she started advertising spells just like a variety of spells like love spells you know like acting like spells. she's making potions and stuff in a sense yeah and she knew th- she knew them all, and <laughs> yeah, but she was great at protection spells. That was her main thing. So, like, you need to be protected. She's, I thought of her like fairy godmother from Shrek 2. Now, keep in mind, during this time, Mussolini was in, was in charge. Oh, shit. Mussolini. And Giuseppe eventually would enlist in the army. And oh, no. when, when he did, she flipped her shit with worry. Man. flipped now Giuseppe loved her he did but he saw that she was just really fragile and sensitive like you can't say your mom's crazy especially in that time and he saw that's all he could really say was like she's really sensitive sorry I was like burping up <laughs> so he just wanted to escape from home at this point he wanted to go out, make friends. He wanted to actually socialize. He wanted to be human, for heaven's freaking yeah, sake. Yeah, he's growing up into an adult, a young adult. That's he's got do. needs, girl. <laughs> he's got needs. <laughs> so he enlisted behind her back. And apparently when he enlisted, um, he didn't even tell her he was going to enlist. He just did it. Well, mm-hmm. obviously, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> Obviously, but he did that in fear that she would freak out just from being told. So he was like, I'm not going to let her talk me out of it. I'm going to do it. And then then she can find out. But it's too late. Yeah. So he used the army as a reason to protect the country. Like, use that as an excuse. Like, I just want to protect my country. I mean, but he, he wants just to see the world. He just wanted to get out. Mm-hmm. This is all he wanted. And so the only way she found out was because people were walking up to her and congratulating her on the street. Like, oh, he's so brave. Thank you for raising him. Or like, he, he's so like, you have such a handsome son. You did such a good job raising him and to just be oh, a brave shit. soldier. So she's like, what? what? Yeah. She's <laughs> like, the hell are you oh, talking no. about? So Leon, Leonardo didn't really care so much about the state of the country. She cared about Giuseppe. She was the main thing. And she knew he would be killed in battle or just come back completely different. Because back then, when men were coming back from the war, she would see how they came back from battle. All the PTSD and just... And that wasn't really a term yet, I don't think. No, they didn't know so, what it was, but they come back... Different. You're just different. That's so shredded from shredded all exactly. Of just, like it's a good word. It's for hard it. for them to come back. Oh man, shredded is ideal. <laughs> and uh, that thousand yard stare and everything, or thousand mile stare, however they call yeah, it. It's so sad. It's heartbreaking. But and especially the wars back then too. They were so bad, like condition wise, and it was just. I don't know. Maybe maybe it'd be an argument, but more grim. I would say. I mean, I've never been in war just I don't, myself. No, but. I thank God. <laughs> Our men have been in the army, but that's... In the military, um... That's different. That's very different. But either which way, um, Giuseppe figured she was going to have a breakdown. Surprisingly, she was suspiciously calm. Oh, man. It's because she was focused. She had tunnel vision, which is giving him a protection spell. And one of the main protection spells involved a human sacrifice. Oh, shit. So, 
Now, she wasn't excited to kill. She wasn't, like, reading this and like, okay, now who's the human I'm going to kill? <laughs> no, she wasn't, like, thinking of her shit list, because by all means, she could have started with that mother of hers. But instead, um, she was just focused. She was just focused on making sure she made a good protection spell and that her son would not die. And she didn't even like killing chickens for dinner. That's all she wanted to do was just protect Giuseppe. And then she realized people come to her all the time. So it'd be easy. Oh my God. Yep. Oh my gosh. So now we have our first victim. So victim number one. Hold on, let me go to my tab here. So first we have Faustina Seti. She was a lifelong spinster and she would come to her because she just wanted to be married. She was this older, skinnier lady and pretty much skin and bones from what I've heard. And she just wants love. She just wanted to be loved. Yep, that's all she wanted was oh. just to be loved. Oh, no. And she just, like I said, wanted a husband. And she knew that uh, Leonarda could supposedly, you know, make good predictions and have her spells. But some of her spells weren't working for Faustina. And she was apparently about 73 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, and she was just poor and lonely. So, this would have been a perfect victim. So, at this point, she told Seti of a suitable partner in Pola. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, it's just another providence that was created after World War I. And now it's part of Croatia after the collapse of 91. So, some fun facts there for you. But, um, in the end, yeah, she told her she found a potential husband basically there. And she went as far as writing her letters pretending to be him. Oh my god. Yeah. Now she asked her, because she was able to persuade her to go to him, in a sense. She's setting her up. Yeah. So she persuaded Seti to write letters and postcards to her friends and relatives. And she told them that they'd be mailed when she reached Bola, just to reassure that everything was fine. Oh my god. Yeah. The, the amount of thought into this is wicked. She also told her not to tell anybody about this. Of course not. Yeah. So, to prep for her trip, she went to visit Leonardo one more time. And when she did, she gave her a glass of wine, kind of like to celebrate, and she had drugged her with the wine. And so once she kind of apparently like dozed off, you know, or started to doze off, Leonardo that came up from behind her and bashed her head in with an axe. <gasps> so apparently with the first batch, um, she, she said, sorry, right before she went ahead and bashed her. When she gave the first blow of the axe, she shot her eyes cause she didn't want to see it. And she ended up hitting her shoulder. So, so the second blow, <gasps> yeah, she had her, her eyes wide open and she got her head after that. So at that point, there's blood everywhere, I'm sure. Oh, my God. She was somehow able to clean most of it up, but she used, because there was so much blood all over the place, she used what was left of the blood and, um, like, was able to put them in ba basins, I guess. But she cut her body into about nine parts <gasps> and just kind of hung them over the basins to let the blood drain. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she That's brutal. So uh, oh, she uh, shit. she used her blood to make tea cakes. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. And apparently, another fun fact, when uh, blood is heated, it, it apparently becomes jello like. Ew. You know, yeah, like a gelatin. <laughs> so um well, in her yeah in her own description and this comes from her book here's a quote from leonarda herself i threw the pieces into a pot added seven kilos of caustic soda which i had bought to make soap and stirred the mixture until the pieces dissolved into a thick dark mush that i poured into several buckets and emptied in a nearby septic tank as for the blood in the basin i waited until it coagulated dried it in the oven ground it and mixed it with flour sugar chocolate milk and eggs as well as a bit of margarine kneading all the ingredients together 
I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. Oh my god! Yeah. So, so... Oh yeah, we ate it too. Yeah. Jesus. Now, some sources say, um, this isn't 100%, but supposedly Seti's life, or that lady, um, life savings were her payment for services to Leonardo. So Leonardo collected what would have been today, like, $1,500, essentially. Damn. Yeah. For helping her. So... Back then, in 1940, that would have been worth, like, $33,000. Jeez. Like, 33479 and some change. Holy shit. Yeah. Caustic soda in general, because th- that's some part she mentioned, um, that was powerful with dissolving hair, bones, stuff like that. So she obviously made soap with the body parts, from what you heard. But... It wasn't acceptable enough to put on Giuseppe from what she saw when she opened the pot. So she dumped it and she gave him the cakes. She never told him what the cakes were made of, obviously. But he and other people did notice there was like a metallic y taste to it. Ew. But they kind of just brushed it off. Like, oh cool. and maybe it was the pot, you know? Ew. Ew. Yeah. It's so giving him those little blood cakes, I guess. Is that the spell, the protection spell in that? In and a that's sense. What, like, she's giving it to him? I'm sure it would have helped, but the protection spell, she she needs to rub the soap on him. Oh. So, uh, obviously now that Faustina is missing, she was trying to persistently read through her books again, kind of seeing what she did wrong, and then she was gossiping with the women as to where she could have gone. Because oh everyone's like, where'd she go? Like, she's missing. She's like, I don't know. Like being all sketch yeah she's being like my tias <laughs> i can sabe <laughs> i can say. so um so on august 1940 she was gonna try again and this time her second victim was francesca suave now she pro- it says August 1940. I see here that she was murdered September 5th of 1940. But either way, um, she manipulated her essentially the same way she manipulated Seti. Mm-hmm. So, um, Chan Shui, because um, she said she found her a job at a school for girls at Biancenza. It's like a city commune, kind of up in northern Italy. Mm-hmm. But, uh... I guess this lady was also well-liked. She was a teacher, I believe, and I think she just wanted to kind of move and just move on, in a mm-hmm. sense, but she wanted to keep teaching and helping. So that's how um, how Leonardo was able to supposedly find her a job at the school for girls. Now, there's other sources that I could go back to, but I don't want to waste time looking for it. But in the end, yeah. She was just manipulating her just the same way she manipulated the last one. Okay, Leonardo also persuaded her to write postcards to friends and family, kind of saying, like, hey, I'm moving, I'm going to go to this new job over here. And she came to visit before she was going to depart for her trip. She was given drugged wine and again killed with an axe. And this time when she came in, she noticed, like, a bunch of basins everywhere. And she was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And then... All prepped and ready. In a sense, yeah. But she she brushed it off, like, okay, that's fine, I suppose. So uh, that's where, again, she got drugged, got killed. And it's said that uh, Leonardo apparently received, like, $155 today for those same services. Mm -hmm. So people were literally paying her what they could. Jesus. Yeah. Paying for their death. Back then, that would have been, like, $3,100. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, while she... After she killed her, and then she started dismembering her, she realized that this one has more fat. And maybe that's what she was missing from the first one. Oh, my God. Yeah, but it was still, like, when she went to go open the pot, it was still a shitty batch to her. It was still not acceptable. So she dumped it out. And this time, she's, yeah. She's just, she's just 
cooking them up, and then she's like, ugh, gross, and dumps it, like, yeah. all that, all, you, <sighs> yep, and she's still making tea cakes out of the blood, she's still doing that, she's just not making soap with these bitches right now, or these women, I'm so sorry, with these women right now, <laughs> and, uh, so same thing as before the people were saying like this tea cake also tastes kind of metallic-y but Ew, maybe, is so gross. maybe that's her new ingredient now i don't Ooh, know that iron taste yep yep so Ugh, gross. this time she figured she maybe had to focus more on the sacrifice itself like to feel it you know not just kill and then cook like feel the sacrifice know. you know so, she was going to try one more time with her third victim, Virginia. Uh, Gacciopo, I believe. And she was murdered on September 30th, 1940. Now, this lady was a bit more popular. She was pretty known. She was like a little local celebrity. Oh, no. And, and that's her target? Yep. Wow. Because she's a widow. Of, and she was a former soprano said to have sung at La Scala, and that's a famous opera house in Milan. So, jeez. Yeah. And Leonardo was a little jealous of her at first. She kind of thought of her as competition. But then she realized after talking to her, like, you're, you're actually a sweetheart. So they ended up bonding, and they were basically really good friends. That's... Yeah. That, that's effed up. <laughs> and it made her feel oh. special instead. So... Uh, Virginia ended up deciding, like, look, I want to move on, and I want to leave. Like, I want to leave this town. Like, it's not good for me anymore. And Leonarda, at that point, felt abandoned, and she got pissed. Oh, shit. Yep. So, Virginia was the one who asked Leonarda where she should go. So, this was the perfect oh, opportunity no. for Leonarda to finally use and manipulate her, just the same way she did with the others. But with this part, though, um, she said she found her work as a secretary for a mysterious um, em impresario in Florence. And that's basically a person who would organize and often finance like concerts, plays, orchestras. It'd be similar to being like a film or TV producer today. Oh, okay. So uh, just like the other two, she also told her not to tell anybody. And... Uh, the pattern of murder was essentially the same for the first two, except something was different with this one. And I'll go back to that. Oh, I remember the same thing. She told her, like, don't tell anybody. But Virginia was like, uh, I'm gonna tell somebody. So she told her sister-in-law, because she was really close with her sister-in-law. Like, talked to her about everything. And oh, so the sister-in-law knew that she had been going to see Leonardo but she didn't know much else after that. All she really told her was that she was going to go on a trip and she, where she was going to go and that she was going to get a new job there. That's all she really told her. And so now then people, uh, now she's going to come over and, you know, say her goodbyes and say her thank yous and maybe pay her. I don't know. And when she came over, shit was off. Her little soap shop, because she opened a soap shop throughout mm -hmm. the years, you know, yeah. being right there, like I said. Her soap shop was closed that day. It's never closed. It's always banging with people. And the house was calm and quiet, which is also very unusual because she always had her kids there. And they weren't there today. I mean, yeah, if they're such good friends, she would know what's up. Yeah, it'd be the same like if you came over and you're like, All's quiet where are the in kitties? The yeah, the like, hell? where are the kitties? Like something's off here yeah like your friends know <laughs> so i'm she, fortunate she has luna has a friend yep so but, uh, shit. she continued to try to manipulate her but virginia was being more difficult than the other ones like she was questioning her and then leonardo of course was like well here go ahead and have a glass of wine at this point it's probably like 10 or 11 in the morning it may not be unusual for us, but it was unusual for them. <laughs> so uh, Virginia was also like, it's so early. Like, why? Why? Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, you're about to depart. This could be our toast. So she went ahead and drank it. And at that point, yeah, she she dozed off. Oh, and Leonardo killed her. And she felt the sadness for the sacrifice this time. How did she kill her? Same thing? With the axe. The axe? Yep, with the axe. Did it the exact same way. Oh, Jeez. Yeah. Uh, she had the nerve 
to not only take off all her clothes and jewels prior to dismembering her, um, God, your supposed friend, your bestie. She sold those. Oh my God. And stole her money also that she had packed for the trip. And as she was, um, that's so fucked. Now the only difference with, uh, with Virginia is that her body was the only one melted to make soap. So as she was dismembering Virginia, she noticed that her fat was white and creamy and perfect. Oh my God. And she took that as a sign. So yeah. Yeah. Her tea cakes were also so much better. She made a uh, perfect soap, perfect tea cakes. Wow. And one of her statements, she ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne. And after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes too were better. That woman was really sweet. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my. So. Uh, Fuck. Yeah. Fudgesicles, man. <laughs> <laughs> and for all like the little jewels and her clothes and like everything else and maybe public bonds, um, I even put the asshole had the nerve to sell the victim's clothes <laughs> and shoes. She only got what would be like t- almost twenty six hundred dollars today. Oh, Jesus. But back then, that was, like, that was like 55 grand back then. So this lady's rolling in some dough. Now, Giuseppe, since now she has her soap, um, Giuseppe comes home and she drew him a bath. He's a grown-ass man, mind you. Mm-hmm. And she demanded to wash him with the soap, every inch of him. Oh, my God. Now, he gave in because it's his mom. He's like... I'm not gonna fucking. I'm not gonna freaking fight with you. Uh, your mom. You're just gonna freak out if I say no. So yeah. no, it's not a Norman Bates thing. He did not enjoy this, and he couldn't even look her in the eye after that. It. it ba- she. I don't blame him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she crossed so many boundaries, mentally, internally, physically. And again, even though it wasn't sexual, in her mind, she's just protecting him and covering him with the protection. Still not okay. No. On top of the fact it's made from human fat. Yes. Uh, he don't know that yet. Friend. Yeah. Oh, I would never. By the way. <laughs> okay. okay. So, yeah, like I said, I would never. <laughs> um, and as we know, it destroyed their relationship. But. She sold that soap to everyone, and they thought it was her best yet. Oh, my God. And she gave the tea cakes to the ladies that came over. Oh, yeah, gross. she she was on a roll here. So, as far as the discovery goes, Virginia's sister-in-law got really suspicious. And I think she even went... Like, somebody went to talk to Leonardo. That I can't... I couldn't pinpoint exactly who. Um... Some lady named Mrs. Capulco. And this lady, um, when she went to talk to Leonardo, she was trying to play it cool. Like, oh, she said she was leaving, but I don't know where. And so she was, she even offered to read her palm, too, just to kind of talk herself up, I guess. And Mrs. Capulco was not impressed with this chick. (laughs) So. It's like Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. She's a little Sophia. So. Golden Girls. (laughs) Albertina Fanti. She was Virginia's sister-in-law. Um, she last saw her entering Leonardo's house. And she reported fears and suspicions to the superintendent of police, Reggio Emilia. So he opened the investigation and soon arrested Leonardo. But she did not confess to the murders until they thought Giuseppe was the one that was involved. Oh, shit. She sang like a canary after that. Uh, but she, uh, at first, they just kind of thought it was cute. Like, oh, yeah, you're just trying to defend you're your son. Covering yeah, him. you're just covering up for him. It's cute. But no, we're, we're, we're playing cop right now. So, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so uh, she, um, let's see. Okay, so she was just playing the, like, I'm a sweet old lady card. 
but I mean, she still is. A, she was a sweet old lady. She mm-hmm. she was. So nobody would have thought or second guessed. And it kind of did make sense for police to then assume that Giuseppe was involved because he was leaving anyways. He was going to the army and they searched the house and brought him in for questioning right away. And he had no idea, obviously, what the hell's going on. A poor boy. Yeah. So she obviously confessed right away. And when she started giving gory details about the murders, that's when they were like, okay, maybe you're not as cute and sweet as we initially oh, thought. But she also, they, they kept doubting her. Like, a little old lady like this could not have dismembered, moved these bodies. Like, they were thinking logically. Like, there's there's no way this lady did that. She did it. She, she offered to prove it. Oh, my God. Now, how she offered to prove it. Uh, where's my spot? I almost lost it. Oh, she proved it by going to a morgue and dismembering a body and having them watch her. She did it in less than 15 minutes. Did it so well and so precisely. What the hell is up with this? Wow. And back then, they didn't have cameras and stuff to just watch her do it. Like, they stood there and watched her and were like, oh, my God. Like, you know what you're doing. So, Giuseppe... Now, she was telling police everything about the details, what she did with the soap and Giuseppe was listening and he started just vomiting his brains out and then after Ooh, that yeah, I was <laughs> yeah oh. he was like oh my god I was bathed with human fat and I ate her blood oh, my stomach just turned so he obviously did like his mom and told police everything about her and her craziness Leonardo wasn't even mad at him. She was just happy she completed the spell. She was almost relieved. She didn't care what else was happening to her. She was just relieved. Oh my, what the? I want to say, yeah. I want to say so many things right now, but I can't. It's okay. You can you can say G rated versions. <laughs> yeah. So biscuits and gravy, man. With yeah. all the cheese and crackers and omelets. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you want cheese and crackers and cheesecakes. <laughs> ah, sorry, I had to take a drink. But, yeah. I'll wash down the blood, you know. Oh, my God! <laughs> uh, you jerk! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. So, the whole town obviously turned on her and her family. Raphael was yet again shunned and lost his job. The poor guy, man. Two times lose your job because of your wife. Because of your fucking crazy ass wife. And he still stood by her. He still still oh. loved her. He still tried to defend her. But Giuseppe at this point, he did go to war. He didn't even go to jail and say bye to her. I mean now, Wait. out of curiosity, continue your thought. What do you think of that? Because there were a couple other opinions about him just going to war and not saying bye to his mom. The favorite child. Yeah, but from what it sounds like, how he took all of that, he didn't feel like the favorite child. He probably felt smothered, violated. He felt just resentful of his mother and like you know being overprotected and smothered like that you think you're you're doing more harm than you are good because like yes you're you're doing everything you can for your child which is what you should do but that pushes them away from you and i'm sure he probably felt like he couldn't trust her anymore either okay because um because another opinion, Stephanie's actually on YouTube. She was like, now, I know everyone's going to have different opinions about this, but he was the favorite child. She loved him very dearly and showed it to him throughout his entire life. She did everything she could for him. So, so she thought, like, and again, completely different perspective. She's like, the least he could have done was at least say bye if that was the last time he'd ever see his mom. Uh, yeah, I definitely see that in for a but another I, perspective. I agree with you, though. But like, in you his just washed me with a human, even though it was to protect me. Like, like yeah, and you, like, it's almost, 
Oh. How could you look at her the same way, seeing that, like... I think you'd almost feel disconnected at that point, you know? He probably was for a long time. This was probably the last little string. Yep. Because, like I said, with... Not that I'm saying that what she did was... Wasn't out of love. Like, she loved him, obviously. She loves him very much. And she's had a lot of issues. But... To say the least. <laughs> but she damaged that natural love he had for her because she kept smothering it exactly. suffocating it exactly. you can't let somebody love you if you're suffocating it and with that like how could he not feel resentful especially how she like forced him to do that bath and everything a grown-ass man like you said because at this point what is he like in his well, he's like, early 20s 20? early 20s yeah. yeah something like that because yeah. like how would you feel if your mom made you oh, do that? Oh hell no! And you're to, like you're you're an adult, and you're like, yeah, he did it. He obeyed her. He obviously loved his mom to that extent too. But uh, he he got a he got a shit end of the stick with all of that too. Well, so did Raphael. So, like I said, he stood by her, but he became very depressed, and then he started to drink. Oh no. He has no job anymore. He has nothing, really, left. So he died before the trial began. I think he essentially drank himself to death, or maybe he had some health issues incorporated with that, but... Oh, no. Yep, died before the trial. So, uh... So, uh, there are notes, because, like, when they went in and um, searched the place, they took her, her pots, her pans and stuff, like, the evidence... And she was basically flaunting the fact that she had donated a copper ladle for the war effort. <laughs> copper ladle that she used. Ooh. But a lot of Does those... Does it still taste like iron? They're on display, so who knows? Go lick it. <laughs> <laughs> but the trial itself was in 1946, and it was very... was unre She was unrepentant about what she did. She didn't give a shit. The, the fucking, well, like you said, all she cared about is getting the spell done, and yep. she did it. And the fucking ass vein corrected the official <laughs> account while on the stand. Apparently, because they were saying stuff wrong or whatever, and this is going back to the copper ladle. Apparently, she gripped the witness stand rail, but calmly set the prosecutor right on certain details. She pridefully concluded... I gave the copper ladle, which I used to skim the fat off the kettles, to my country, which was so badly in need of metal during the last days of war. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, and all those, like I said, are on display in a museum, I think, in Italy. But, um, she was milking the horrified attention at the trial. So she was just giving her details and, you know, giving the... <gasps> kind of gasps and sounds and she was like she was okay basically thriving on the yeah she was getting attention yeah but she was deteriorating mentally and everybody at the trial saw that like she had doggy dementia in a sense oh, man so she thrived in prison though she told stories to women she gave advice read palms ironically worked in the kitchen Baked badass pastries. They still put her ass in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. She can't Christ. kill nobody. <laughs> but she. Oh, this cruel irony. As I've mentioned, she wrote a book and recipes. And some top chefs in Italy still refer to these recipes to this day. Because she was apparently a really good cook. Wow. Yep. And throughout this, her seizures did come back, and she was just in really bad shape. Like, she was having brain bleeds also, too. But after prison, she went to an asylum. Do you remember what the Romani said? Uh, yes. In one hand, I see prison. In the other hand, I see asylum. Holy shit. <laughs> well, she went to both. Yeah. She shit. did her time and then went to the mental asylum. So she died in her sleep on October 15th, 1970. Now, the brain bleeds were possibly from the caustic soda, just slowly dissolving her brain. And then um, her kids, they end up getting out of town and change their names. Giuseppe, there isn't much about him, but he possibly died before his mom. So it's possible, though, he changed his name. 
but it's not proven. I mean, considering he was in the army and in war, it's very unlikely he had time to go and just change his name. But he most likely died in war or was captured. Unless he tried to make it seem like Giuseppe died in the war and he just went off and... Maybe. Not... Got a new identity. Yep, maybe. And it, not much is known. But that right there is the story and tale of Leonardo Cianciulli. <laughs> Crazy. That is really crazy. Pretty intense, man. I didn't know much about her at all. The fact that she turned off so quickly just for Giuseppe. Yeah. Her, she turned off all of her emotions, all of, like... Did she even care that her husband died? I don't know. It didn't really say. I'm sure she was really hurt and upset about it, but... It didn't say, and honestly, with her mental health deteriorating the way it was, who knew? Who knew, honestly? I don't know if she even remembered. And it's like, after all of what she went through to save Giuseppe, she lost him. Yep. Whether if it was, he actually died and she lost him still, or she, like, but... Obviously, she lost him completely because he never came back. <laughs> and like a like a mom, you know, she may not have had him in her life at the end, but from what she knew, he was protected. And that's all she cared about, was that her son was protected. But she doesn't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. The obsession that overcame her. Yeah. That's trippy. Yeah, really though. <laughs> wow. Yep. That, the... <sighs> so I know it's a lot to take in, guys. I know. It was a two-parter, but... It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a lot of knowledge, for sure. Just, I don't want any bloody tea cakes, though. Still yeah. want cheesecake, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do the cheesecake, but Still I think I'm good on... It. Ugh. Yeah. Well... Thanks for cruising with us. Yeah, Thanks yeah. Time. Do what you will with that. I would definitely recommend looking her up and and you make know. sure your soap is not made with human flesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't check your soap. Maybe look into body wash. You know, like soap <laughs> is cool. It won't dry your skin out as much. You can go to Lush. <laughs> <laughs> go to Lush. You, you know what's oh, in there. Lush. We need to go to Lush too. Ooh, which I got a body wash from Cat, and it's a uh, chocolate based. <gasps> Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> Okay, you're really making me want cheesecake with the chocolate talk. And all right, we're gonna go to Lush and we're gonna go get cheesecake. So, okay, talk to you later. All right, bye guys. Deuces. You can listen to us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcast. You can also reach us at Let's Go Cruising Podcast at gmail.com.